Wasa is a popular open source security platform that provides an extensive range of threat detection, visibility, and response capabilities. Wasa is a combination of XDR and SIM. Wasa acts as a host based intrusion detection system, actively monitoring servers, endpoints, and workstations for potential security incidents. It analyzes system logs, file integrity, and configuration changes, alerting administrators about suspicious activities or anomalies that may indicate a breach or compromise. Wasa is so flexible that it provides deployment alternatives. You can deploy Wasa on virtual machines, Amazon machine images, Docker, or Kubernetes. You can even deploy it offline or from sources. Wasa is composed of three central components. The Wasa indexer, which provides full text search and analytics engine. The Wasa server manages the agents, configuring and updating them remotely. This component analyzes the data received from the agents. The Wasa dashboard provides the web interface for data mining, analysis, and visualization. Why the Wasa agent is a multi-platform component that runs on the endpoints to be monitored. Before we proceed with the installation, be aware of the hardware requirements. This table shows the recommended hardware for deploying the Wasa server, the Wasa indexer, and the Wasa dashboard on the same host. Hardware requirements highly depend on the number of protected endpoints or agents. But for this video, I will just use the minimum hardware. If you don't meet the minimum hardware, you will encounter this error during installation. But you can still continue by using the hyphen I option. As I mentioned earlier, there are a number of ways to deploy Wasa. But in this video, I will deploy it on a virtual machine and use the Wasa installation assistant. Wasa central components can be installed on a 64-bit Linux operating system, including Red Hat-based systems, Debian and Ubuntu. But in this case, I'll be using Ubuntu. To begin the installation, I log into my Ubuntu server. Then, all I need to do is run this one-liner command. The command fetches the Wasa installation script and installs Wasa components automatically. Once the assistant finishes the installation, the output shows the access credentials and a message that confirms that the installation was successful. At this point, I have now installed the Wasa indexer, the Wasa server, and the Wasa dashboard. To change the admin password, run the script provided by Wasa with the hyphen U option and indicate the new password with the option hyphen P. Fire up your browser and access the Wasa web interface by going to the Wasa server IP. When you access the Wasa dashboard for the first time, the browser shows a warning message stating that the certificate was not issued by a trusted authority. This is expected and accept the certificate as an exception. Now, I can log into Wasa using admin as username and password that I set earlier. After logging in, Wasa will do some checks and then you will be presented by the dashboard. The next step is to deploy Wasa agents on Linux endpoints. For this video, I'm going to deploy the agents on Ubuntu and Rocky Linux. Now click the Add Agent link. This will direct you to the Deploy New Agent page. I'm going to deploy the agent on the Ubuntu server first, so I'm going to select the Deb AMD64. And then, on the server address, I'm going to put the IP address of my Wasa server. On the optional settings, I would like to leave this blank since I want the agent to use the host name of the server. But if you prefer to assign an agent name, you can set it here. Then, on the group settings, let's leave it on default for now. At this point, Wasa will provide a command that we must run on the Ubuntu server. This command should be copied and run on the Ubuntu server. But before running the command, I need to change as root user. Now I can execute the command. Once the agent is installed, let's go back to the Wasa dashboard and see the next step. Let's copy and execute the systemctl commands to start the Wasa agent. Now the Wasa agent has been installed and started. Let's check the status on the Wasa dashboard. As you can see here, the Ubuntu server has been added. Now let's add Rocky Linux server. To add another agent, click on the Deploy New Agent link. This will direct you to the Deploy New Agent page. The process is still the same as the previous steps, but this time I will select RPM AMD64. The server address is still the same as well as the optional settings. Now we have to copy the provided command and execute it on the Rocky Linux server.
and we also need to execute the systemctl command to start the agent. Once the agent has been started, we can go back to the WASA dashboard and verify that the agent is connected. As we can see here, the new endpoint, Rocky Linux, is now connected to the WASA server. Now let's check the SCA policies or security configuration assessment for the Ubuntu server. As you can see, SCA involves assessing and analyzing various configuration settings on systems to identify potential security risks, vulnerabilities, or misconfigurations that could be exploited by attackers. This includes checking settings related to operating systems, applications, network configurations, and other components of the server. If you click on one of these assessments, it will provide various information, such as the rationale why it is considered a vulnerability, the solution on how to fix it, and the description of the vulnerability. Let's go back and check the assessment on my Rocky Linux 9 server. As we can see here, my Rocky Linux server doesn't have any SCA scans. To fix this, we need to log into the Rocky Linux server and modify the SCA rule set. Search for Red Hat release and add Rocky Linux to the rules. Just copy the one in the above line and put Rocky Linux instead. Save and exit the file, then restart WASA agent. Now let's go back to the dashboard and see if the SCA scan has been generated. After the fix, my Rocky Linux finally has an SCA scan report. I can now browse on the failed checks and apply the remedy to make the server less vulnerable. One of the WASA functions I want to show in this video is the capability to detect and discover vulnerabilities in the operating system and applications installed on the monitored endpoints. To see the vulnerabilities of the endpoint, go back to the agents list, then select an agent, in this case, I will select the Ubuntu server. On the top menu, select vulnerabilities. By default, the WASA vulnerability detector module is disabled, so we can't see any results here. Let's go ahead and enable the module. Log into the WASA server and modify the OSEC configuration file. Search for the vulnerability detector and set the value for the enabled tag to yes. And then, enable the operating system you intend to scan. In my case, I'll enable Ubuntu. Unfortunately, Rocky Linux is not supported as of this time. The feature request to support Rocky Linux is still in discussion. So let's go ahead save and exit this file. Then restart the WASA manager to apply the changes. Now go back to the WASA dashboard and refresh the page. This will ask you to log in again since we restarted the WASA dashboard service. Once you are logged in, browse to the agents list and select your desired agent, but in my case, I will select Ubuntu. Then select vulnerabilities from the top menu. We can now see the inventory of all the vulnerable packages installed for this particular agent. If we look at one of the items, it shows the details of the vulnerability. More importantly, the condition of the vulnerability. That's all for now. Drop me your feedback and comments below. If this video helped you in any way, please like share and subscribe. Thank you.